when searching on YouTube for voltage detector circuit, you will find many tutorials showing how to build the circuit and demonstrating it. But how and why it works? And is there only one way of building such a circuit? In this video, we will see together how this transistor-based voltage detector circuit works and why it can be used as a touch sensor. And we will even design a more reliable circuit using the concepts that we have covered so far. It's gonna be a good practice for everyone, so make sure that you watch the video until the end. We have a lot to cover today, so get ready and let's start our video. Before going into voltage detector circuit, let me tell you that starting from my next video on, I'm going to start a 5-5 timer series, where we are going to build very useful and practical circuits, which I'm sure that you're gonna like. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you can stay tuned. Alright, now let's focus on this transistor-based voltage detector circuit. At the first look, the circuit seems very simple, but why these NPN transistors are connected this way? Well, to understand this, let's find the total emitter current in Darlington pair transistor. First of all, we need to remember that the collector current is equal to beta times the base current and the emitter current is the summation of the collector current and the base current. So overall, we see that the emitter current is nothing but the base current amplified. By focusing on the first transistor, these are the equations that we can derive. And if you notice, the emitter current of the first transistor is the base current of the second transistor, which is gonna help us to find the current parameters of the second transistor. And by applying the same rule for the second transistor, we can see that the emitter current of the second transistor is nothing but the first transistor emitter current amplified, which is the amplification of the base current. At the end of the day, we can summarize the working principle of the voltage detector circuit by the following statement. Whatever you have at the base, it's gonna be amplified at the emitter. So if we return to the transistor-based voltage detector circuit, we can see that the only difference is we have here one extra transistor stage, which is going to do nothing but increase the amplification factor at the output. Alright, so far so good. So how can this circuit detect the presence of AC voltage then? Well, actually the main idea is quite simple. When connecting an antenna or some copper sheet to this transistor base, it will act as a part of a capacitor. The live wire, on the other hand, will act as the other part of the capacitor, and the air between the copper sheet and the live wire is the dielectric material. And since the live wire and your body has reference to ground, this will allow a very tiny amount of current to jump through this capacitor to this transistor base, which is going to be amplified millions of times to appear at this transistor emitter. This will light up the LED indicating for AC voltage nearby. For the sake of testing this circuit, I built it up on a breadboard and used even 4 stages of NPN transistor. I also made up some sort of an antenna using a copper wire, connected it to the transistor base and here's the result. Alright, so how can this circuit work as a touch sensor then? Well, here we have almost the same concept. While the antenna is acting as a part of a capacitor, your body will be acting as the other part of the capacitor, and the human body will pick up the electromagnetic field from the nearby main wire. That's why when touching an oscilloscope probe, you will see some signal with 50 Hz frequency. So touching the antenna with a bare hand will simulate getting this circuit close to a live wire, and the yellow LED will light up. But you know what? This circuit seems random and just amplifies everything. So what if I want to connect this circuit to a microcontroller to detect if there is main wire nearby or to use it as a touch sensor? Well, in order to have an improved version of this voltage detector circuit, the new circuit must feature both amplification and control. For this, I will be using amplifier for amplification and comparator to add control to the circuit. And to achieve this, I will go for LM358 integrated circuit since it contains two amplifiers, which just fulfill my needs. Building a differential amplifier will provide amplification to the input signal coming from the antenna. I've chosen 10 mega ohms for the feedback resistance and 10 kilo ohms for the inverting input resistance, which will give me a gain of 1001. 
The non-inverting input resistance, on the other hand, is used for limiting the input offset current of the amplifier, the LED for indication, and that's it. I've built the circuit on a breadboard, tested its output using my oscilloscope, and it worked fine. As a note on the output signal, since the op-amp V- terminal is grounded, the signal is clipped at 0V. To make the comparison more clear, let's compare it with the input signal. To provide control to the voltage detector circuit, the amplifier output is connected to the non-inverting input of the comparator, and the inverting input is connected to a voltage divider. To set the comparator at which voltage level it should trigger the output. By doing so, I have control over the circuit behavior. By the way, the working principle of comparator is explained in details in open based oscillator episode, so make sure that you watch that video if you want to learn more about comparators. Alright, now let's carry on. I've chosen these resistor values for the voltage divider circuit to trigger the comparator once the amplifier output voltage is higher than the voltage divider output. At the end of the day, I built up the whole circuit on a breadboard and here is how its output looks like. If you want to connect the comparator output to a GPI open of a microcontroller, it's possible to connect a low pass filter to the comparator output. And here is how the signal looks like after connecting a low pass filter. If you want to learn more about high pass filter and low pass filter design, you can watch RC filter design episode from the card shown above. Finally, here is how the circuit works in AC voltage detection. For test purposes, I've used the plate of a piezoelectric instead of the antenna, and it worked. This brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember that your support is the only thing that keeps more awesome videos coming. Stay tuned and see you next time!